Hey guys, Mikos is here and in this video, I'm going to share to you how I write modern riffs, modern metal, prog, rock, whatever, or gen, whatever you want to call it. Basically, writing modern riffs to improve or spice up your guitar playing, so stay tuned. This video doesn't have a skill requirement, so whether if you're just beginning, starting out, or if you're a fairly intermediate player or even an advanced player, I bet you'll still learn something from this video because there's a lot of tips that you can instantly apply to your playing. So let's get to it. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, which I highly recommend that you do, it's at Picosis. You know that I have been writing demos and riff ideas almost by the week. And even if most of those or some of those are kind of rough, I admit that it's not still in its final form. And we'll get to that. Also keep in mind, I'm not an expert. I am just sharing my approach and what is effective for me and hopefully you can find something that you can apply to your own playing style as well or just even the principles that you can also apply in general because again if this is riff writing this is also songwriting so there's no one way to write a song so this will be another tool to your arsenal so when it comes to songwriting you'll be prepared so as you watch in the beginning of the video that's the most recent riff idea or playthrough that I've made. So we're gonna break that down and I'm just going to share what is my general approach in writing those types of riffs. So to start off my guitar is in drop C. I did not actually tune this well but any tuning will be fine. It's the general approach anyways. Alright so the first tip will be find your chord progression. So with this song it's pretty simple. So earlier this week I thought to myself I want to write a riff that's in the classic um, <clears throat> the classic metal or rock chord progression. So basically I just use the classics um, D, D, C, and A sharp. I don't know if, how to translate that in <laughs> drop C, but anyway, this, these are the chords. Those three chords, that's like classic rock songs, right? But I, I, I chose to play it here. I can use and take advantage of the open C. That's why I'm in drop C, so I can use it for the chugs. <laughs> anyway, I just decided that this week I'm going to use the classic chord progression. I love this chord progression. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> and I think a good idea or a sub-tip to this would be try to listen to songs that aren't in your genre, aren't your preferred genre. So what I mean by this, if you're an indie guitarist or you're an acoustic guitarist, try to listen to metal songs, try to listen to prog songs, and vice versa. Personally for me, I like to listen to pop and a little bit of electronic music just to, just to clean my palate a bit because of course if we keep listening to metal, it will just everything will just sound the same. So, Try to broaden your horizons. It doesn't make you less of a metal guy if you listen to mainstream songs, at least for me. That's it. So basically the chords. Okay, second tip is create a groove. So basically, you don't have to find the notes yet, the exact notes yet, but you have to find the rhythm that your chord progression has to live in. A good tip to this one is, even if you're not writing songs yet, but you thought of a group, use your phone's voice recorder or anything that can record your voice and try to save that group because you never know if you think of something that inspires you to write but eventually you forget it. So try to record as much groove ideas as possible. It doesn't have to have the notes yet but it's a good idea to have a flow to it already. So in the video, the group that I started at was... <laughs> no, not that note. And I think I try, I try to imagine the drums already for that as well. So like then and then So that's what I mean if you try to record your voice. <laughs> Pardon my horrible voice, but yeah, try to try to visualize how your riff is going to go. And as you've noticed, I didn't actually put a lot of thought in the chords. It's just like bar chords and then open. You don't have to go all fancy yet with all the with the, all the random fingers everywhere of the fretboard yet. Just try to visualize the main essence of the riff. Next is you have to connect the chords. So this is I guess 
this part is kind of subjective to what you want to hear or at least I would suggest that try to think of what do you want to hear if you're writing it. Don't try to just use classic licks to connect them. You always try to imagine in your head what the song would sound like. Again, a lot of music influences can help with this as well. So in this one, I was, I think I was imagining Again, this comes with experience as well and just learning a lot of ideas and what you prefer because again, this is your music so it should be the ones that you like. So in my case, I was trying to just make the classic progression as Miko as possible, <laughs> if that makes sense. So like a lot of a lot of the those notes because I love the sound of those notes. So when I when I started, it's like this, and then a lot of syncopated and a lot of palm mutes in between. Then you're going to connect them, right? I use those. I use. I, I use those slides, and also um, the dissonant sounding chord. Um, again, this is this comes from experience. So just make sure to use as much not not really as much notes, but as much articulations, I guess, in the guitar, because that makes that makes the riff more in interesting. So it could be easily. I mean, if you're going to that for that style. Um, by all means, but I believe in writing more modern riffs that are that grooves well, slides and the dissonant notes, making chords as well. That's why a big chords in metal is a big thing right now. Shout out to my fellow Filipino Mark Holcomb to to just elevate that kind of playing. But there's just a lot of slides to just connect the chords. So yeah, so in this example. Again, in, the, in this part, it's basically an open chord and just try to find the melody in your head. So uh, I thought I thought of those those. So I, I tried to find it in the fretboard. And you know it always sounds good if it's an open string with a lot of notes in between. And then I just, I, I didn't even connect it. I just moved on to the next chord, but I added more notes to it instead of the just the basic I added two more fingers and then this could and then the, just a quick lick after and that's that's how I connect from this chord to, to the start again of the riff so and earlier this week I was always imagining this chord, this note so I added it in the riff as well there so I guess a tip uh, would be is try to analyze the riffs that you like as well what makes you attracted to it how is the riff memorable to you so if you think if you analyze one of your favorite riffs and oh there's a lot of slides in that riff so try to put it in your playing as well I don't think this is the best riff to be an example for a lot of ideas but I think this is a good gateway to making unique riffs for you. Then the next tip is don't forget to change it up a little because in metal we have everyone has the short um, attention span. <laughs> if you're going to write a riff and you're going to repeat the riff, just make sure to change the notes a little bit. In my example, in the second repeat of the riff, it's the same, but in the slide part, I change the second note. Instead of just again, so it's just a little bit of subtle hit of call and response, as you will, because you're answering this one. Here. So, there it's a little different, but of course, the ears will perk up and think about oh, that's that's different. And then again, in the E part, up and in the C part, instead of, instead of picking the notes. 
I use it to make a, a child part as you will, but like, eh? I use that instead, it just makes it more heavier in a way. And the rest is almost the same, so I have two repeats of the same riff, but there's something unique about it and it won't get stale or boring. And the fifth tip would be learn, but don't overload yourself as well. In the era of YouTube, Instagram, Udemy, Creative Life, and all of those, we tend to try to learn as much or watch as much, but try to realize that not because you're just, you're watching a lot of videos means you're learning. Try to apply as well. So that's what I mean by don't overload. If you watch a lesson, a guitar lesson like this one, and you learn something from it like, oh, I want to apply that one, then start applying that simple technique first. Don't try to apply three different techniques in one riff just yet because it takes time. You can't you can't be Tosin Abasi in one riff just because you watch his lesson. That's that's a big tip for me, which is I try to reason out that I'm productive because I'm watching a lot of guides and lessons and what, but I don't get to apply it. So this that's not effective. You'll just forget it. But if you try to apply it as simple as just one slide riff or one lick or one scale. You'll easily see the results and, and it will help boost your confidence for one and also just keeps their drive going and going to learning more instead of just learning, instead of just watching and just getting frustrated nothing's happening. And the last tip would be it takes time but let go of what you have. The reason for this is you'll not be amazing overnight and believe me I struggle with this as well. I get frustrated that most of my riffs aren't translating to the ones in my head because in my head, I'm Stephen Taranto. <laughs> yeah, but it's frustrating because sometimes it's a simple riff. A simple but still kind of complex riff and I can't translate it to the guitar just yet. But always try to remember that write the music that you want to hear. There's no reason to out-shred or out-riff anyone because there's always going to be someone better than you in this world. Just do you. Just enjoy writing. Enjoy playing guitar. And that's, that's why that's why you should be able to let go of a riff as well. For example, in the in the in this simple riff that in that simple riff that I've made, I learned to like let it go for now because it's just a way to for you to evolve. Because if you keep working on one riff and you keep improving it, improving it, learning something, learning a production technique, learning a guitar technique and just updating that same riff. It will still be the same riff, but instead of just doing that, try writing at least once a month or once a week, depending on your schedule. I bet you'll have a better experience and I bet you'll be able to craft better riffs quicker. Because again, if you apply tips that I gave you and if you try to apply one new technique per month, eventually it will add up and eventually you know like in three four months you'll be making riffs that even you didn't imagine that you can write before and again don't be afraid to just rack up riffs in the riff graveyard or just save your riffs and you can always come back to it when it's recording time already and even then even if you're recording for the actual record the riff may still evolve in the ep there's a lot that i changed the riff while I was actually recording for it already. So don't be afraid to make your demos evolve. Don't try to fall in love with as much as possible. Avoid falling in love with a demo because that will also hinder the growth of the song, which again, it takes time. So I guess that's it guys. Those are the tips that I use in writing my riffs. So feel free to share any ideas or any approach that you have in the comments below. I'd love to learn more and apply it to my own playing as well. Also, don't be afraid to suggest any videos, tutorials, production tutorials that you want me to cover below because I'd like to know what do you prefer in mowing coming from me. I hope my teaching is valuable and effective to you guys and, and if you learned something new today, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also, please share this to your friends. It helps me a ton if you help me grow this channel a little bit more. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's at Mikosis. I will be posting riffs there per week. So I hope you'll be inspired in writing riffs for your own songs as well. So again, thank you. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do suggest any other lessons that you want me to cover. And again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Miko and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!